SpaceX has been launching a lot of satellites recently. We're talking about hundreds of satellites in a couple of months as part of their Starlink project, where they want to connect everyone on the Earth to the internet. And to achieve global connectivity, they aim to put tens of thousands of satellites up into low Earth orbit. And this has caused a lot of controversy because it's changing the way the night sky looks for everyone in the world. After every launch and deployment of a set of Starlink satellites, you'll see lots of videos like these appear online, where you have a train of 60 or so bright satellites following each other across the night sky. And they can be seen all across the world. Here's an example from a country at the end of the world, which is often left off of maps, New Zealand. So this is an important thing to note. This isn't just a project which is changing the sky for a single country, this is changing the sky for everyone. And often when people criticize what SpaceX is doing with the Starlink program, they're met with a series of arguments against that criticism. And they often share the same kinds of principles. So in this video, we're gonna go through those arguments and see how they hold up. Now I should point out that I am an astronomer, the apparent natural enemy of the Starlink side, so keep that in mind with my argument. But also keep in mind, I am an avid fan of space travel, and every SpaceX launch that doesn't involve Starlink satellites, I am a huge fan of, especially their incredible achievements of landing and reusing rockets. Those are remarkable achievements and things that everyone should celebrate. Now getting into the arguments with my handy notebook. The first one you often see on these videos where astronomers say these objects are incredibly bright and will ruin ground-based astronomy is that they're not in their final orbits yet. And this, although largely true, doesn't rule out the problem for ground-based astronomy. When they're first launched, they are indeed not in their final orbit. It will take them a few days to get into their final orbit. Now SpaceX's plan is for these satellites to be around 7th magnitude. Now this means that we won't be able to see them with our naked eyes, but it still means they're very bright to big telescopes. As an example, a lot of the things that I look at in astronomy are around 19th magnitude. And a 7th magnitude object is about 60,000 times brighter than a 19th magnitude object. So if I'm using a telescope to take an image or take a spectra of a distant galaxy or supernova while one of these satellites crosses in front of it, my data will be completely ruined. There's no way of recovering the signal from this very faint galaxy or a supernova if a Starlink has passed in front of it. So although we might not necessarily be able to see them with our naked eyes, they will still be a massive problem for ground-based astronomy. Now once this is pointed out, the next argument is often, why don't you just put the telescopes in space? SpaceX has lowered the cost to entry of space by a tremendous amounts. And I'm sure the uh, godfather Elon Musk will be happy to support science by sending some telescopes up for reduced fares. Uh, ignoring the supposed argument that we might get free rides for telescopes up into space, the short answer to this is space-based telescopes are incredibly difficult to build. They take decades of planning for even the smallest of telescopes, and they are incredibly difficult to keep running. They're in all of the Earth. You need a team of people to monitor the satellite and make sure it's behaving correctly, make sure it's pointing correctly, and the technology that you need to use in this telescope in space needs to have technology that's space tested. So things that won't do some odd behavior and perhaps disrupt the entire system or blow up the satellite in space. So that means you need to use technology which is older than what you would be able to use on the ground. And another point is that astronomers have gotten very good at using telescopes from the ground. We're building enormous telescopes that are on order 40 meters in diameter in optical astronomy. And these telescopes are much, much better than Hubble and the James Webb Space Telescope in certain areas. And just to put it in perspective, Hubble took 20 years of planning for a two and a half meter diameter mirror. 
The James Webb Space Telescope has taken several decades and has cost about $10 billion for a six meter mirror. And to build, say, an eight meter or a, a 20 meter mirror in space would cost an incredible amount of money. And the technology that you would need to keep the telescope pointing precisely at a patch in sky would be incredibly difficult. Not impossible, but insanely difficult. So it's not simply as easy as pick up a telescope and put it in space. There's a lot of extra conditions and hoops you need to jump through for that to be able to happen. So even if SpaceX was generous enough to launch telescopes for free, there would still be an incredible overhead and incredible cost to sending telescopes up into space. And once this is pointed out, the next point that gets raised is that we just hate progress. Now, I'm not really going to rebuttal this question because it seems peculiar to me to accuse um, scientists as standing in the face of progress. The last point which I find particularly interesting is the point that this Starlink technology will allow people to break, uh, say, internet monopolies in countries and get around things like censorship in countries that have perhaps more authoritarian um, ruling governments. Now the monopolies side of things I don't really see any point to. If you had a functional government, the government could uh, regulate the internet providers to make sure monopolies don't happen and you have a fair internet service. I mean it's not impossible to have internet services to people, we use it already. But it does raise a concern with me if SpaceX is successful with Starlink. You could imagine a business model like this. They put up tens of thousands of satellites into low Earth orbit, essentially blocking off other satellites to be able to go up into low Earth orbit. So now SpaceX has the monopoly on low Earth orbit telecommunications satellites and they could, say, price the internet as lower than what the traditional internet service providers can achieve. So undercut the market. So then of course everyone say, all right, let's go to SpaceX for their internet services. So then lots of people migrate to SpaceX and then you could see the collapse of traditional internet service providers. And then you're left with a giant monopoly controlling access to the internet. Now, it may be that everyone involved with SpaceX is completely level-headed, insane, and wants the best for humanity. Or it could be that, say, articles that don't quite agree with things that, say, Elon Musk says, might have some connectivity issues to the wider public. All of these comments seem to neglect one big feature, is that there may be collisions that happen between satellites if you pack tens of thousands into low Earth orbit. Um, and I guess we could say that everyone in charge of SpaceX again is um, very on top of these things, not doing anything particularly crazy, and again has the best interests of everyone at heart. But there have been some things recently that have made me doubt this. I can't think of exactly what they might be. Hmm. But anyway, those are the main arguments I always see in regards to Starlink being a good thing and that we should effectively abandon ground-based astronomy and give up our heritage of the night sky. So if you have heard of other debates or questions that people have raised with Starlink, feel free to leave them in the comments below. But for now, thanks for watching.